so welcome to all so today we will be discussing about the measurement of power factor the power factor is one of the most important parameter in the electrical system now what is power factor there are many circuits which measures the power factor the power factor is nothing but the ratio of true power to the apparent power and the power factor is also denoted by cos of phi we can obtain the power factor by dividing the watt supplied by the volt ampere in the circuit but many time it is necessary to calculate or to find the power factor without doing much calculation a power factor meter is consist of two coils or basically two circuit one is the current circuit which carries the current circuit current or you can you can say the load current whose power factor is to be measured and the pressure circuit which is splits in two parallel circuit one is one is non inductive and other one is inductive in nature now the deflection of these types of instruments depends upon the phase difference between the load current and the current in the two branches of the pressure circuit that is upon the power factor of the circuit as the power factor can also defined as the phase difference between the voltage and the current so the difference between the load current and the current in the two branches of the pressure circuit remember that the current which is flowing in the pressure circuit is proportional to the voltage applied in the pressure coil so the difference between the two current will be equal to the power factor of the circuit the scale can be calibrated in terms of phase angle or indirectly the power factor cos of phi now there are two types of instrument that are in common use one is the dynamometer type watt dynamometer type power factor meter and the another one is moving iron type watt meter sorry power factor meter now the very first one we will discuss about the dynamometer type single phase power factor meter now the principle of operation of this kind of instrument is similar to the dynamometer type watt meter right so uh, in this type of instrument it consists of two fixed coil c c connected in series carrying the load current and two identical pressure coil p1 and p2 of very fine wire mount now these two pressure coils are pivoted on the same spindle and fixed at right angle to each other and this and this two coils p1 and p2 form the pressure circuit and it is basically the constitute the moving system of the power factor meter the pressure coil p1 is connected across the supply through non inductive resistance r and the pressure coil p2 is connected across the supply through a highly inductive choke coil of inductance l right so remember the pressure coil p1 is always in phase and the pressure coil p2 is always out of phase and is is approximately equal to 90 degree now here is the circuit of the single phase dynamometer type power factor meter we already discussed that there are the two uh, there is a current coil so the, that c and c are the current coils that p1 and p2 are the pressure coils as you can see that pressure coil p1 is connected with a resistance in series across the supply voltage the current that is flowing in the pressure coil p1 is equal to i of 1 and the pressure and the pressure coil p2 is connected across the supply with a in series a highly inductive choke coil whose inductance is equal to l also the pressure coil p1 and p2 are mounted mechanically with an angle of 90 degree and current i which is known as load current is flowing through the two current coils now remember the value of non inductive in resistance r 
and the inductness L are so selected that on in the normal frequency that on the normal frequency the current in the two pressure coil P1 and P2 remains same. When the current in the two coils P1 and P2 are equal then it produces equal strong magnetic field. But remember it the magnetic field will be displaced by 90 degree in space as well as in phase due to the inductive nature of coil P2. Now practically it, is, it, is, it, it may not possible to, to have an exact phase difference of 90 degree between the current in the two pressure coils and to compensate it we can make a an mechanical angle between the two axes of two coils P1 and P2 equal to electrical angle difference between the two currents. Now the pressure coil P1 and P2 moves together and a carrier pointer which indicates the power factor of the circuit directly on the scale as we have already seen in the diagram. The moving of pressure coils are connected by a thin, sil thin silver or gold ligament which are extremely flexible in order to give a minimum control effect on the moving system. Right. And remember one more thing that for the measurement of power factor on high voltage system this current coil and the pressure coils of the instrument may be connected with the main circuit through current transformer and potential transformer as it is not possible to directly connect the high voltage system to the power factor meter. So for measuring the high voltage power factor and high voltage system power factor we connect this system with the CT and PT. Now how the dynamometer type power factor meter works? Now, uh, the very first condition when there is no current flowing in the system. So the moving coil will be in neutral and will remain in the position in which they are turned. Right? And but remember this will happen only when when the when the system is perfectly balanced and there is no controlling torque. Now, second, when the instrument is connected in the load circuit. Now, we are connecting the circuit, uh, power factor meter to the load circuit. The current flows to the moving coil P1 and P2 and the fixed coil CC. The flux is set up in this coil and under the influence of the turning movement caused by the interaction of the fluxes, the moving coil will turn to such a position that the resultant torque experienced by this coil is zero. Right. So, when we connect this circuit to the load circuit, the two fluxes are produced. One in the pressure coil and another one is in the current coil. So, there are two fluxes in the moving coil and in the fixed coil. When these two fluxes are interact with each other, then there will be a turning movement and this turning movement will be settled down at the resultant torque zero. Now, now we will consider the three cases one with the unity power factor another one with the zero lagging power factor and the third one with the zero leading power factor. Now very first one the case the very first case is the when the instrument is connected in the circuit of unity power factor. Now the current in the potential coil P1 will be in phase with the current in the current coil because the current the because the coil P1 carries current in phase with the voltage of the supply circuit right. So as the power factor is unity so uh, the current will be in phase with the voltage so the pressure coil P1 current will be in phase with the current coil current. Now at the same time the current in the pressure coil P2 will lag 90 degree behind the voltage or behind the current in the current coil CC. Now the pressure coil P1 will experience a turning movement. So why? Because of current flowing in the pressure coil P1 it will experience a turning movement and it will try 
it will try to align itself in the position parallel to the plane of current coil CC. And the, the torque that will be produced in the pressure coil P2 will be 0. But as the pressure coil P2 is connected mechanically to the pressure coil P1, it will also, the, it will also follow the rotation of pressure coil P1. Right. So the P1 will align itself in the it, itself in the position of unity power factor. The second case. In the second case, the power factor of the load circuit is zero, lagging. Right. So the current in the pressure coil P2 will be in phase with the current in the current in the current coil CC. Both lagging behind the circuit voltage by 90 degree. And the current in the pressure coil P1 will lead the current in the current coil CC by 90 degree. As the current is lagging by 90 degree, the, the current in the pressure coil P1 will be leading by 90 degree. Now, in this condition, the pressure coil P2 will experience a turning moment. So, that its plane will come in position parallel to the plane of current coil. Now at this instant, the pointer will indicate zero power factor lagging. Now the third condition, when the power factor of the load circuit is zero leading, the current in the fixed coil leads the voltage by 90 degree and therefore the field of pressure coil P1 by 90 degree and that of coil P2 by 180 degree. The polarity of the field in the current coil is reverse. And what we have considered in the zero lagging power factor case and at this instant of time the pointer will indicate zero power factor leading on the other half of the scale right so here is the diagram of single phase dynamometer type power factor meter v is the voltage that is applied voltage and the i is the current which is flowing in the load circuit. I1 is the current which is flowing in the pressure coil P1 and I2 is the current which is flowing in the pressure coil P2. Right. So V is the supply voltage and I is the load current lagging behind the supply voltage V by an angle phi. And I1 and I2 are the current flowing through the coil P1 and P2. Now the two different torques, torques act on the moving part. One due to the coil P1 and another due to the coil P2. Now, remember the coils are connected in such a way that this torque acts in opposite direction. Torque for any coil for a fixed current will be maximum when the coil is parallel to the field. The torque acting on the coil P1 will be proportional to the supply voltage. Right? As the current that is flowing through the coil P1 depends upon the system voltage and the strength of the field which depends upon the system current. Now if the supply current I lags behind the supply voltage V by an angle phi and the moving part equilibrium position is at an angle theta from the reference plane then the torque T1 acting on the coil P1 is given by nothing but T1 which is equal to K which is a constant voltage V multiplied by current I multiplied by cos of phi sine of theta where phi is nothing but the power factor or the uh, cos phi is the phi is nothing but the phase angle difference between the voltage and the current and theta is the angular deflection. And the torque T2 which is acting on the coil P2 is given by T2 which is equal to KV of I cos of 90 minus of phi and sine 90 plus of theta. Now at the equilibrium position the both the torque T1 and T2 will be equal. So we can equate the two equation cos of phi sine of theta will be equal to cos of 90 minus phi sine 90 plus of theta. Now we know that cos 90 minus phi is nothing but equal to sine of phi and sine 90 plus of theta is equal to cos of theta. So 
by transferring the cos and sine we can find that the tan theta is equal to tan of phi m and phi is equal to theta so at the equilibrium position angular deflection of the coil theta from the reference plane is a measurement of phase angle of the system now we can calibrate the instrument instrument in terms of phase angle or directly in terms of power factor now the second type of power factor meter are of moving iron system in the moving iron power factor meter all the energizing coils are stationary right so the stationary coils are there and the moving element is free of electrical connection right so the moving element is not connected is free of electrical connection a moving element can rotate through 360 degree giving scale extending over full circle and the second advantage of this type of instrument is that it got large working force as compared with the those dynamometer type instrument now due to this advantages the moving iron system moving iron type power factor meter are prefer over dynamometer type the for the the moving iron type system are less accurate than the dynamometer type of instrument why because of losses in the iron parts of the instrument now basically there are two types of moving iron power factor meter one is a rotating field type and another one is alternating field type so first we will discussing about the rotating field type instrument now principle of this type of instrument was developed by the westinghouse right so uh, in the rotating field type of the instrument it consists of the three fixed coil triple a with the axis mutually at 120 degree and intersecting on the center line of the instrument connected to the three phase through a current transformer so in this type of instrument there are the three fixed coil which are at 120 degree and all these three coils are fed from the three current transformer now another coil which is fixed coil b is placed at the center of the three fixed coil and it and it is connected across the any two phases either r o y y or b or b or r and this is connected with the a highly non inductive resistance and the moving iron system is placed inside the fixed coil b so here's the diagram of the rotating field type of instrument we can see that the, there are the three fixed coil a a and a which is fed from the three current transformer right and there is a moving another fixed coil b which is fed from the non highly non inductive resistance r in series with the any and the that that coil b is connected in between any two phase of the three phase supply right and a moving iron is placed inside the coil b now a rotating field is set up by three coils triple a when connected to the three phase supply it is same as the generation of three phase rotating magnetic field that we have already studied is study in the three phase machine three phase induction machine induction motor yes of the three phase induction motor and an alter, alternating flux is set up in the moving iron system due to the alternating alternating current flowing through the coil b right so there there is a three phase rotating magnetic field which is set up by the three coils triple a and an alternating flux is set up in the moving iron system which is due to the flux which is set up in the coil b now remember the moving iron system 
cannot rotate continuously and it will tends to set itself in angular position depending upon the relative phase of the current in the coil b and of the current in the coil triple a now the current in the coil b is practically in phase with the voltage of the supply circuit right the current which is flowing in the coil b will always in phase with the voltage of the supply circuit right so the reflection of the moving system is approximately equal to the phase angle of the circuit now as the iron is present in the instrument and the variation of reactance of the coil b with the variation of the supply frequency the errors are introduced in the readings of the instrument with the variation of supply frequency and therefore it is become it becomes necessary to calibrate the instrument at normal frequency right so so the second one in the moving iron power factor meter is alternating field type right so now in the alternative field type of instrument it also consists of three set of moving iron element it consists of three set of moving iron element mounted on a single spindle one above the another with a non magnetic separating pieces in between them and spaced at 120 degree in different parallel plane right so each iron piece is magnetized by a separate coil known as pressure coil right the three pressure coils are star connected to the supply to the three phase supply so here is the diagram of alternating field type moving iron power factor meter so here is the three coils pn pn and pn is supplied with the three phase through a non inductive non inductive resistance r we can find that there are the two current coils which is connected in one of the phase either r y or b there is a pointer which is mounted on the same spindle and there are the damping vanes which is also mounted on the same spindle with a no control device right so there is a one current coil which is split up into two halves and placed on each side of moving system and pressure coil the that current coil is connected in one of the phase of the three phase supply now when the instrument is connected across the supply circuit whose power factor is to be measured the moving system of the instrument turns into such a position that the mean torque upon one of the iron piece is equal to the magnitude and opposite in nature to the resulting torque on the other two iron piece what will happen the resultant torque on the whole moving system is zero now in this steady state position of moving system of the instrument the deflection of that iron piece which is magnetized by the same phase as the current coil is equal to the phase angle between the voltage and current of three phase supply circuit right now the there is one condition the effect of iron loss and the inductance of pressure coil are negligible the reading of the instrument of this types are not affected by the variation in supply frequency voltage and waveform as might be expected in ordinary supply system thank you